Hi everybody. Um, I notice a lot of people have been measuring their roots of the plants I've been growing. And so it made me think, why not do some more measuring? So I do have this book, The Inch Book, written by Elise Richards, illustrated by Shelley Diedrichs. And I wanted to read this with you. And then let's talk about measuring. One sunny afternoon in class 2B, Mrs. Rios gave out a special homework assignment. As you all know, we've been learning a lot about measurement lately, she said. Your homework assignment tonight is to go on a measure hunt. What's a measure hunt, asked Peter. It's like a treasure hunt, but the rules are a little different, said Mrs. Rios. First, I'm going to give each of you a measuring tape, a special tool that you will use on your hunt. She passed out a tape to each student. Peter looked at his measuring tape. It had a lot of lines and numbers on it. Peter raised his hand. What are the marks for, he asked. You use them to measure how long or tall things are, replied the teacher. And right now, I'm going to show you how. Everybody, take the cardboard wrapper off and unroll your tape. Peter, why don't you come up and help me demonstrate? Peter smiled as he opened this tape. This would be fun. The numbers on your tape start at 1 and go up to 59, began Mrs. Rios. The end with the 1 is the beginning of the tape measure. To measure, you start at this end. She held up a measuring tape and showed it to the class. The distance from the beginning of the tape to the first line that goes all the way to the top to the bottom is one inch, she continued. See, the first line is marked one. The distance between one line and the two line looks like the same amount, said Peter. You're right, Peter, answered Mrs. Rios. It's the same amount. The distance from one numbered line to the next is always one inch. For example, the distance from the two to the three or the seven to the eight is one inch. To measure how many inches long something is, put the beginning of the tape at one side of the object, hold the tape so it's not twisted or loose, then look to see what number is closest to the end of the object. That's about how many inches it is. The book is eight inches long, said Peter, who was measuring as Mrs. Rios spoke. That's right, said Mrs. Rios. The book end near the eight inch line. But what if I want to measure up and down, asked Peter. Then you put the beginning of the tape at the bottom of the object and hold the tape so it goes up and down, replied Mrs. Rios. Look at the number closest to the top of the object. That shows how high something is instead of how long. I understand, said Peter. So my book is one inch high. Yes, said Mrs. Rios. Now, sometimes you want to measure bigger things, she continued. Then you can use a larger unit of measurement called a foot. A foot is the same as 12 inches on your tape. The 12 line is also marked one foot. And the tape changes color at each foot too to make it easier to see. To measure using feet and inches, you'll look at what the last foot line was, then count the number of inches past that line. My desk is 18 inches long, said Peter, measuring. The last foot line says one foot plus one two, three, four, five, six inches. That's one foot and six inches, right? Right, Peter, said Mrs. Rios. And what about something that is 27 inches? The closest foot line is 24 inches or two feet. Then there's one, two, three inches. So 27 inches is the same as two feet, three inches, Peter said. You've got it, Mrs. Rios said, smiling. And there's even a bigger measurement called a yard. One yard is the same as three feet or 36 inches. So you can tell me what 40 inches would be if you were measuring in yards. Well, 36 inches is one yard. And then there are four more inches. So 40 inches is the same as one yard or four inches, replied Peter. That's it, Mrs. Rio said. I understand about inches, feet, and yards now, said Peter. But there are smaller lines on the tape, too. What are they for? That's so you can measure things in parts of inches, explained Mrs. Rios. The small lines show how to measure a quarter of an inch, a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and even eighths of an inch. But you don't have to use those small lines on your measure hunt tonight if you don't want to. Just measure the things closest to the inch line. During softball practice, Peter pulled out his measuring tape to look for more treasures. He measured a softball. It was four inches high from top to bottom. He measured his glove. It was eight inches long. He measured a softball hat. 
It was two feet long. Follow along at home. You can find in your house something that is about four inches long, something that is about eight inches long, something that is about two feet long. Sitting at the dinner table that night, Peter continued his hunt. He measured the salt shaker. It was three inches high. He measured his sandwich. It was six inches long. He measured his dog, Hero, who was sitting next to the table. Hero was one foot, six inches. You can follow along at home. Find something that is about three inches high. Something that is about six inches long. Something that is about one foot, six inches high. P Peter even took his measuring tape into the bathtub with him after dinner. He measured a bar of soap. It was four inches long. He measured the toy boat as it floated past. That was five inches long. He measured a bottle of shampoo. It was nine inches long. Follow along in your house. Find something that is about four inches long, five inches long, and find something that is about nine inches long. As he was getting ready for bed, Peter told his mom, I measured lots of things today, but I didn't find anything over a yard. There's something that big standing right here, his mom said, patting Peter on his head. She helped Peter to attach his measuring tape to the wall, then said, now stand up straight with your back against the tape. Peter was four feet, two inches tall. Follow along at home, ask an adult to help you attach your measuring tape to a wall so that you can measure yourself. You can even leave the tape on the wall and use it as a growth chart. Everyone brought the results of their measure hunts to the school the next day. When it was his turn, Peter went to the head of the room. I measured lots of things, he said proudly. Did you have a good time on your hunt, Peter, asked Mrs. Rios, smiling. Yes, I did, Peter said happily, and I'm glad I found out how to measure. It didn't take long to learn. So that's the end of this story, and it gave some nice information about measuring. So, if you remember... Here's a ruler, and it starts at 1. That's our starting point to measure, and goes up to number 12. And 12 inches equals 1 foot. Same thing. If you have a measuring tape, this allows you to measure something even bigger. So try to use that. Now using the ruler and a measuring tape or a yardstick, if you have a yardstick, which would be as big as three of these, um, is your standard way of measuring. But there's also a way of uh, measuring a non-standard way. And this is great if maybe you don't have a ruler around. So use a non-standard unit. Um, you can use Legos. You can use pretzels. You can use a leaf. You can use, I have these little cubes. You can measure this book using my cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This book is ten cubes long. So have fun and measure.